Praise the Lord. Good morning. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a great joy and privilege once again to be here this morning, beloved and friends, to minister the word of God. I trust the Lord everyone is in good health and happiness regardless of our situation or world. As I always say, Jesus says in his words, Lo, I am with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of the world. My friends, it's not a great promise. Isn't that a great assurance this morning that God promised to be with us even unto the end of the world? He says, a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but no evil shall befall thee and no plague shall come by thy grave. This morning, every spirit of witchcraft, oh dear, demonic forces, evil, I destroy under the precious blood. No weapon that form against you shall prosper. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but no evil shall befall thee, and no plague shall come by thy grave. Praise God, my friends, Jesus Christ is our healer. He said in his words, he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I am healed, you are healed, we are healed this morning, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. For the blood of Jesus is so efficacious, and the blood of Jesus is so powerful. The blood of Jesus is a repellent that destroys every yoke and every bondage and every fetter and every evil and every work of darkness. In Jesus' name, Father God, dip me in the river of liquid fire of the Holy Spirit. And on my lips, and on my tongue, and on my voice, as I minister your words. Your words will go forth on the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. That many will be healed. Many will be saved. Many will be blessed. Many will be delivered. Many will be set free. Many will come to know thee as Lord and Savior. Into thy hands I commit my life. And I declare victory in the precious name of Jesus. But my friends, before I get into the word of God, I want to pray this morning. I want to pray for the people of Ukraine. I want with that war with Russia. I do not know what Putin is doing, but it's in the Bible. He is God. And Russia is my God. I do not know if we can stop it. Only the Lord can stop it. I'm going to pray for the people. Praise God and everyone this morning and for your healing. Father God, I pray for the people in Ukraine this morning. I pray God you cover them under the precious blood and build a hedge around their lives. I pray God for peace and protection and you intervene in that war in Jesus name I pray. I pray God for those who are sick this morning. Those of you who are looking at me right now in your living room, in your dining room, in your car, in your kitchen, in your office and wherever you are in church or even right here wherever you are I want to let you know that Jesus Christ is still in the healing business. I do not care this morning what is the magnitude of your sickness. Whether you have cancer, or you have diabetes, or you have a heart problem, or you have a kidney problem, or you have a, a blood problem this morning, a dialysis problem, whatever you have this morning, whatever sickness you have, I want to let you know that Jesus Christ can heal you and touch you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are this morning, if you're watching me live right now in the name of Jesus, I send for the anointing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Whom the Son set free is free indeed. I can see in the spirit realm this morning that many are healed. Many are healed from different major sicknesses and pain and disease. I can see a man with a blind eye. Your eye just opened. For over nine years, you were not seen. And I can see right now in the name of Jesus that God has popped your eye open and you have regained your vision. You have regained your sight. It's the power of God, the Holy Spirit, my friends. It's God, the Holy Spirit, that tells you that Jesus Christ is your healer this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, I pray right now you anoint me as I get into your words. Your words will be a blessing to many. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Praise God. This morning, I want to preach on and warn you what is coming to this earth. Hallelujah. We are living, my friends, in the very, very last days. Hallelujah. The last days. The days where we're going to enter into the great tribulation. 
But I want to tell you this morning, we need to prepare for these last days and be warned what is about, what is coming, what is coming. We must be warned about what's coming to this planet Earth. Hallelujah. And the people around the world. Not one nation, but the all 247 nations. I know there's 195 sovereign nations in the world. And I preached a message six months ago that says God is shaking the world. God is shaking the entire world. And God is going to shake all the sovereign nations, 195 nations of the United Nations. God is going to shake all the nations. And I see it coming to pass, which I preached six months ago, that all the presidents are losing control. I said that. And I can see they are all losing control of what is happening. Even the superpower of the world do not know to make a right decision right now. Probably they are afraid of Russia. And they're afraid of one spark can cause a third world war with this madman. My friends, I want to let you know, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. And God is in control of what is happening. Whatever is written in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, must come to pass. These things are prophecy being fulfilled and no matter what we do, we cannot stop what is written in the word of God. Hallelujah. Let me get right into the word of God. My friends, the day all nations will be gathered before the Lord. Hallelujah. The day when all nations shall be gathered before, before him. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another. As a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Matthew chapter 25 verse 22 tells us what are we gathering for. Hallelujah. It is of a great necessity that we realize what the purpose of our gathering will be my friends. So as to take the subject more seriously this morning. Hallelujah. As stated by the Bible, the Lord will gather all nations in order to separate those that are his from those that are not my friends. It doesn't matter if you choose to live a reckless life or not. The day will come when the Lord will bring everyone to judgment. Hallelujah. Our gathering is for the purpose of judgment, my friends, and separation of the sheep from the goats. Hallelujah. Praise God. Someone may want to ask, what difference does it make if I am counted with the sheep or with the goats? I will tell you this morning, the Bible makes us understand, my friends, that the destination of the sheep is incomparable, different from the destination of the goats this morning. And he will set the sheep on his right hand and on his left hand, he on the left hand the goats. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, come. You are blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Hallelujah. From the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 25 verse 33 tells us. And 34 my friends. This morning according to the scripture. The sheep will be set on the right hand of God. And the goats on the left hand of God. All through the Bible. The right hand of God has always been used. To denote strength and blessings. It also manifests my friends here. Hallelujah. We are made to know that God will say to all those on his right hand side. Come and be blessed. Inherit the kingdom be paid for you. From the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. While the goats on the left hand side of God will have the part of the lake of fire. Of burning fire with sulfur. I pray that will not be the portion of you and me my friends. Therefore let no one deceive you today my friends. The second coming of Jesus Christ is real at hand. Hallelujah. Prepare and pray towards it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Here I will be focusing more on this big day and what the Bible says about it this morning, my friends. What will happen at the gathering? Hallelujah. It will be characterized by the presence of all the great men and women that live before us. Hallelujah. 
and I, I, and I saw the dead, small and great, standing before the throne, and the books were open. Hallelujah. Another book was open, which is the book of life. Hallelujah. And the dead were judged according to the works. Hallelujah. Which are the things recorded inside the books. Hallelujah. Praise God. Revelation 20, verse 12 tells us. Praise God, according to the verse of the Bible above, we are made to understand that the great men and women of God who lived and died before us will be there, my friends. Hallelujah. Before now, we have only read about these great men and women in history. In history books, but on the Lord's day, we will be gathered together before the Lord. Hallelujah. Death will no longer have the power to separate us like it is now. Hallelujah. Because the Lord, by his sovereign power, has seized death. Hallelujah. We will all appear before him to receive our judgment. According to the works of our hands. Hallelujah. Praise God. Therefore, my friends, your feet, the fleet of cars and the authorities of life, we all run after we no longer matter here. Every man will appear before God just the way he came into the world, as simple as ever. Hallelujah. What will matter, my friends, is the kind of life we live on our time. Hallelujah. Praise God. It will be characterized by the presence of a great multitude. Such as it has never been known before him. We shall be gathered, my friends, all nations. And he shall separate them from one from another. As a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. Matthew 25 verse 32 tells us again. Hallelujah. Just imagine. Just imagine the Bible in your little life from your childhood till now. Take a brief count on the number of people that you know that lost their lives at, from, at one time to the other. Either your relatives, your friends or neighbors. Hallelujah. It will surprise you how many people fall into this category. Now, allow your mind to explore, my friends, how great the multitude will be if everyone is to separate before the Lord, both the dead and the living. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, this morning, such gathering will be the first ever to take place. Hallelujah. Without a doubt, it is totally impossible, totally impossible to compare the degree of magnitude of this day, my friends. According to history, we are made to understand that humans have been in existence several thousands of years before Christ. Imagine the number of people that have lived all through the, those years, their children, relatives, kings, princes. Maids and all my friends, all they will all appear before the Lord as well, as well as God Himself will orchestrate and bring to pass the impossible. Looking, look, looking at my friends. Now this, the question is: Is that this kind of awesome God ought to be feared this morning? Shouldn't we live in accordance with his project, with his precepts of order, knowing fully well that he has the ability to bring these things to, to, to be? Hallelujah. Think about this this morning. This gathering will be characterized by the separation of the sheep from the goats. Hallelujah. And he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. Hallelujah. Matthew 25 verse 22 tells us this morning. The scripture tells us, uh, my friends, that in this big gathering, the Lord will separate uh, the sheep from the goats. Hallelujah. Come to think of it, why should God refer to this creature as sheep and goats? What does uh, the depicts uh, of this, my friends? Yes, uh, just as shepherd separates uh, the sheep from the goats, uh, because they are of different character and value. In the same way, my friends, the Lord will separate those that are his from those that are not. Hallelujah. The sheep are those who live the life of God on earth. 
those who honor his words and are obedient to his commandments because his word says my sheep knows me and hears my voice hallelujah while the goats are those who live according to their own way and ways without considering the dictates of God. Hallelujah. Right from the creation of time, my friends, one thing God has always given us freely was the right to make our choices. Hallelujah. He never forces his op opinions on us. Of course, my friends, he encourages us to live right, but he never forces us to which is the reason why a lot of people today choose to walk in the way that screams right into those end thereof is destruction. However, on this great day, my friends, hallelujah, on this great day, my friends, hallelujah, the Lord will separate those who live according to his ways, according to his ways, hallelujah, the way that seems right unto them. I will not want you to make an observation in this verse of the Bible this morning. You will notice uh, there are only two categories uh, talked about uh, sheep and goats. Hallelujah. My friends, uh, there is no third group. Uh, there is uh, no middle ground here this morning. You are his or you are not his. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me this morning? A lot of believers today are different about what is God and not. They are not so unclear about their walks with God. Such stand will not be tolerated on that day, my friends, as the Lord is only interested in separating those who are His from those who are not. Are you hearing me this morning? It doesn't matter how many of you try to fool others into things that are your sheep, but you cannot fool God, my friends. He knows you more than you know yourself this morning. Are you hearing me? If you belong to this category of uncertainty, uncertain questions, I beg of you to repent today, repent because the Lord will not permit such on the day, that great day, hallelujah, you have to make a renowned decision on whose side you want to be, the Lord's side or the side of the devil, hallelujah, do not dilly dally, daily identify the difference, my friends, know that your decision entails and be ready to give it all and and most important, shine your light to all men. Hallelujah. Let your friends, company, family, and colleagues, my friends, come to the awareness of the king of life. And you have chosen to so by, by so doing, you will have to live a godly life led by many to let many to Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Not having compassion for others will cause you to be rejected by God. Hallelujah. Praise God this morning is the longest and most famous sermon of Jesus record in the Bible. Jesus stated explicitly that those that are merciful and blessed and that they will obtain mercy. When you show mercy to others, you are preparing yourself to become a recipient of divine mercy. Many believers think they are going that they are doing good and they are good people favors by showing mercy or by being compassionate to them. While this is true, it is also very important for us to know that we ourselves uh, we ourselves uh, greater favor by being compassionate to others. The reason is that uh, the mercy you receive from God by being merciful and compassionate to others or uh, outreach the compassion you have shown to them and believe that you need the mercy and compassion of God. My friends, being compassionate and merciful is a divine attribute. 
which every believer is expected to possess, like it is expected to, to be got, like we are God's children indeed. We should be as merciful as He is. Hallelujah. We only prove it to, to the world, to, to, to the word of God that we do not share the divine trait of being merciful or not being compassionate to others. We are therefore at variant with God, and then we are compassionate to our fellow humans. We are products of God's mercy and compassion, and we are expected to reflect the same uh, limitations. Lamentations 3, 22, the verse 23 says, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because of his passions. His passions fail not, uh, and they are renewed every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Having been sustained by the mercy of God, we will be rejected by him. If we are not compassionate, Jesus told a parable in Matthew chapter 18, verse 23 to 25, to illustrate God's displeasure. Each time we fail to be compassionate to others, and the result, of consequence of such evil action, here is the parable of the unforgiving servant. My friends, although he owed his master a huge sum of money, his master was compassionate to him after he had pleaded. But the same servant who was forgiven went out and found his fellow servant, who owed him little compared to the debt that he was forgiven. He held him and, and demanded him for instant payment. Matthew 18, 20, it records the wicked servant hostility. Thus, uh, but uh, the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. Uh, and, and, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, uh, saying, Pay me that thou owest. Uh, the most uh, operate, operate definition is not of being compassionate. It is its brutal, brutal wickedness. What accident does the unforgiving servant have to lay hands on his fellow servant? But the same offense he had committed, my friends. It's unfortunate that many believers will cast blame and judge the unforgiving servant while they are just as guilty as he was, as seen in the story of the unforgiving servant, my friends. Not having compassion for others will make us be rejected by God when the news of the unforgiving servant acts got to his master. The master was fierce with him in the same vein. God will always receive a signal when we fail to be compassionate to others. The judgment of the unforgiving servant was expectedly stated in verse 32 to 34, which reads, Then the Lord, after he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all the debt, debt because thou desirest of me. Child, should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And the Lord was brought and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay for all was due to him. My friends, there are great lessons we have to learn from the parable of the unforgiving servant this morning. This is the first, uh, is that God can reverse his mercy over a person when he or she proves not to deserve his being, un being uncompassionate to others. Just like you choose, you will give mercy to God. Does uh, that also in Romans 9.15 tells us this morning. For he said to, to Moses, I will have mercy to whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion unto whom I will have compassion. Hallelujah. Praise God, my friends. Our God is a loving and merciful God and a compassionate God this morning. 
Hallelujah. You need to serve him. Hallelujah. Because we're living in the last days. And you need to be warned about what is coming. We have to face Almighty God. Are you living for God? Or are you living for the devil? The choice is yours, my friends. Choose God and go to heaven. And choose the devil and go to hell. Where the fire is not quenched. Where sulfur and fire be for all eternity. My friends, choose God today. Choose life and not death in Jesus name. God bless you richly my friends. It has been a joy and a great privilege to be here this morning to minister the word of God. I trust the Lord that to walk in the ways of God for indeed we are living in the very last days and a time is coming when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and those who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord God in the air. I'm speaking my friends about the rapture. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Praise God. Have a blessed day. I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I love you in the love of God.